The scores that we are going to curve using Microsoft Excel are actually classroom contribution scores from a college-level statistics class. In column L, you will see scores that range from 0 to about 36. These scores come from giving students one point if they answered one of my questions correctly, two points if they answered a peer's question correctly, and no points at all if they asked a question, particularly a very basic one. First thing we'll do is calculate the population mean and the population standard deviation. The reason why we're using the population standard deviation is that I'm not using this class to make any inferences or any future studies. This is a population unto itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the equals button and then we're going to type in A, V, and you'll see that you have a, a choice for average right here, A, V, E, R, A, G, E. I'm just going to double click on it. And I am going to go into column L, which is classroom contribution. I'm going to click on the first score. Then I'm going to hit the shift key, then the arrow key, and I'm going to go all the way down until I hit the last score. Then I'm going to release the shift key. And I'm going to close the parenthesis and I'm going to hit enter. And that is the mean. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compute the population standard deviation. So I type the equals button and then I type ST and you'll see we get STDEVP, P for population, of course. Double click. Then I'm going to go back to the classroom contribution scores. Shift key, down arrow, go all the way down, release the shift key. Now I'm going to close the parenthesis and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so far so good. Now, the next thing we want to do is a little tricky with Microsoft Excel. You would think you would just copy and paste these values into all the um, rows, but you actually have to do it in a slightly different way. You're going to hit Control C for copy, but you're not going to hit Control V for paste. You're going to right click. And then you're going to hit this paste link over here. And that will make sure that if this is recalculated, this will also be recalculated. And we're going to do the same thing for the population standard deviation. Control C, click on the next cell, right click, last entry for paste link. Now, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to go back into the mean column and we're going to grab this lower right corner. And when our mouse pointer turns into a plus sign, we are going to bring that all the way down. And then we're going to release. And you'll see we have the same exact value. We're going to do the same thing for the standard deviation. Our mouse pointer turns into a plus sign. We drag and drop it all the way in. And now we have it. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to format these cells so that the table is easy to read when you do your, you know, your conference with your students. And you could tell them what the mean and standard deviation was. So what you do is you right click and then you go format cells. You make them numbers and it'll automatically make two decimal places. You click OK. And now it's a lot easier to read. And I'm going to center these again to make it easy to read. Now, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to compute the z-scores for every student. The z-score for classroom contribution will tell the student how many standard deviations the student was above average. 
So when you have your conference at the, you know, at the end of the semester with the students, you can say your classroom contribution was this amount above average. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to hit the equals button, and then we're going to hit the parenthesis button, and then we're going to take the, the classroom contribution. We're going to subtract the mean. We're going to close the parenthesis divided by, and of course, the standard deviation. If you took stats, you know this. Now, the way I set this up, we can do the same thing. We take the mouse pointer, we go to the lower right corner, this becomes called a fill tab, and we bring this in, drop it. Now, every student has a z-score, but I like formatting z-scores to only have two decimal places because I believe tables should be readable. The names in this data set have been uh, cleared out so that nobody could see it. But this first student, for example, I could say, you scored 0.88 standard deviations above average. And that's good. You could also say you scored almost a whole standard deviation above average. This student, you would say you scored a little bit below average, uh, 0.35 standard deviations below average. And I say below average because we have a negative sign over here. This student over here did amazingly over two standard deviations above average. This student was the top in the class. This would be, in the language of today, you would call this a three sigma event. This student's classroom contribution was so good that this student scored over three standard deviations above average. So now that we have the z-score, we can make the curved contribution scores. So I'm calling this CCC. So in my syllabus, I let the students know that I curve classroom contribution to have a mean of 72 and a half and a standard deviation of 11. And I do this because it's a nice, generous curve, but it also fits the cut points at my college very well. So you hit the equals button and you go 72.5, that's the mean, plus now the standard deviation that I use is 11. And then I multiply this by the student's z-score. And then I hit the enter button. I'm going to click on it. Again, the mouse pointer turns into a plus sign. Drag and drop it all the way to the bottom. And now I have a generous curve of classroom contribution with a mean of 72 and a half and a standard deviation of 11. Now, I want to format these in a way that makes a conversation with the student as easy as possible. So I go to Format Cells, click on Number, and now I don't want any decimal places at all. I want this rounded to the nearest integer. I click OK, center it, and now when I have my conference with my students, I can tell the first student, your classroom contribution score was curved to be an 82. Yours was curved to be a 100. Let's look at the Three Sigma event student, the 3.59. Her classroom contribution was curved to be over a 100 because it was, after all, a Three Sigma event. Now, this is not the only way to curve scores. If you wanted to not have this, you could choose a lower mean, you could choose a lower standard deviation, and you could do it using a percentile-based method, which I could show you if I get a comment. I could show you how to curve using a percentile-based method. But I like a generous contribution curve because public speaking is something that is difficult, 
um, for a lot of people. And I want my students to be as encouraged as possible to put themselves out there psychologically and speak in public. Now, one quick little thing to end this video, you'll notice that I have a column for lowest grade, and I want to show you how easy it is to drop the lowest grade if you decide to use this methodology in your own teaching. The way you would do this is you would hit the equals button, and then you would type MI. And see over here, we have min for minimum. We double click. Now, when I compute my grades, I use these four components. Classroom contribution that's been curved, test one, test two, and test three, which is my final exam. Now, you'll notice all my students have a grade of zero because I have not yet given them the final exam. But because I dropped the lowest component, I can have a conversation with each one of them. And I could say, if you don't show up for the final, this is the grade you will get in the course. And they appreciate that tremendously. So here's how you do it. You click on the first score, comma, second score, another comma, third score, another comma, and final exam. Close parenthesis, enter. Now, of course, the lowest scores are zero, but they won't be at the end of the semester. So now we have all these done. And I'm going to show you how I calculate the average where I drop the lowest component so that you can do this too if you so desire. So you hit the equals button and then you hit the parenthesis button. And then the classroom contribution is the first component. Test one is the second component. Test two is the third component. The final exam is the fourth component. Now, I want to drop the lowest component. So the way I do that is I hit the minus button because that will drop it. And then I click this lowest component. And then I close the parenthesis. Now to compute the average, I'm not dividing by four. One, two, three, four. I'm dividing by three because I dropped the lowest component. So now when I hit enter, I have scores with the lowest component dropped. Drag and drop. Release. Now, of course, I'm going to format this so my students, you know, are not driven crazy. So format cells, number, and I want this rounded off to the nearest integer. I'm going to center it so it looks good. And now I have students that have done so well that if they, the first student, for example, if the first student did not show up to the final exam with the contribution that this student has at this moment in time, the student would get a B plus and 87 is a B plus. However, classroom contribution is not yet over. So if this student stopped showing up, and more students started contributing. I have this set up so that when I put the final class contribution scores in, the curve would automatically adjust itself. By setting up the spreadsheet this way, you can have conferences with your students at any point in the semester and tell them how they are doing and how you would project they would do if they continue along a present course of action. If this video was helpful, I would appreciate it tremendously. If you would like, subscribe, and shoot me a comment so I can be encouraged to make more videos like these. And if there is a topic on statistics, data science, or teaching, shoot me a comment and I'll do my best to make you a good video.